geckos don't attract much attention. But speculation as to how they stick has mostly come from watching geckos taking walls in their stride. But the smoothest plaster is not really smooth when viewed close up under an electron microscope. Could these tiny bumps rub against the gecko's textured soles to make a friction hold? This, after all, is what stops trainers from slipping at the gym. But no one can make trainers grip upside down. Some insects also have good vertical hold. This jungle nymph secretes a thin film of fluid from a gland, which makes a tacky bond between its foot and the glass wall. But geckos don't leave sticky footprints, which suggests that natural glue can only work for flyweights. Geckos have been taxing scientific minds ever since Aristotle. But of course, their remarkable feet go back much further than that. Maybe there are clues from their past. Worldwide, there are a staggering 850 species of gecko. From the most beautifully beaded of lizards to the tiniest. The most recently discovered is just one and a half centimeters long, the smallest lizard in the world. Although most live in tropical forests, there are grassland and desert geckos too. They've adapted to many different walks of life. How can their undersoles be so flexible? In fact, not all of them owe their success to sticky fingers. We know from specimens trapped in amber that sticky foot pads have been around for at least 30 million years. Their most distant relatives probably lived on the ground, like today's banded ground gecko, and therefore had little use for either climbing claws or sticky pads. Any move into tougher terrain would have placed heavier demands on footwear. To catch prey on rock faces, geckos would have needed grappling claws. Sticky feet probably evolved to help geckos climb and feed among the smooth, waxy leaves of tropical plants. From these shiny surfaces, it would have been a relatively short step to our walls and windows.